Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming our presentation. My name is Riho, and they are my co-presenters, Saya and Ayumi. So today, we will talk about our topic, Japanese art. Japanese art expresses heart feelings and demonstrates artistic creativity of Japanese people. It preserves an ancient tradition. Today, I will explain Japanese flower arrangement, and Riho will discuss Japanese pottery. And finally, Saya will tell you about Japanese drums. Please enjoy Japanese art. I'm Ayumi, and my presentation topic is Ikebana. As we said, there is a lot of traditional arts in Japan. One of them is Ikebana. Ikebana is Japanese flower arrangement. So, before I start presentation, I'd like to ask you, do you like flowers? <laughs> uh, have you ever bought a bouquet of flowers for someone you love? <laughs> so if you had, you had a special emotion with flowers. Ikebana is also special art for Japanese people. So today, I will tell you three topics about Ikebana. First, differences between flower arrangement and Ikebana. Second, history of Ikebana. And third, seasonal events and special meanings of flowers. Let's begin by differences between flower arrangement and Ikebana. Both are used flowers. However, there are some differences between them. First is flower arrangement. As you can see, flower arrangement is a wide variety of flowers. So we can use a lot of flowers to fill the space between flowers. Also, it is gorgeous and colorful. In addition, flower arrangement is symmetrical. On the other hand, Ikebana has asymmetry, and it is used few flowers to make space. Japanese people think Space shows off Ikebana beautifully. Also, we can use any natural materials in Ikebana. For example, flower is one of the common materials in Ikebana. Also, we can use cut branches, fruit, and vines. Therefore, um, the type, shape, and the number of flowers are quite different between flower arrangement and Ikebana. Next topic is history. Now, Ikebana is one of the traditional common hobbies in Japan. So, it has a long, long history. The beginning of Ikebana is 6th century. At that time, Japanese people began to believe Buddhism and they offered flower on Buddhism altar to express their appreciation to Buddha. And then, a monk made a basis of Ikebana. He decided how to arrange Ikebana. So, Japanese people began to arrange Ikebana as a decoration and put it in Tokonoma. Tokonoma is a Japanese traditional guest room, so they can show appreciation and welcome to their guests. Now, Ikebana is an art mostly for female, but at first, men, especially rich men, practiced Ikebana. However, as changing generation, rich men began to decrease, and a few people did Ikebana. So, Japanese government decided to teach Ikebana at girls' schools. That's why women began to do Ikebana. Now, some girls' schools are still teaching Ikebana at the class. They teach women's politeness and manner as, um, through Ikebana lesson. Also, men began to be interested in Ikebana. 
Actually, one of the professionals of Ikebana is a man. Now, we'll move on to seasonal events and special meanings of flowers. In Japan, there is a lot of traditional seasonal events, and each event, we can enjoy different kinds of flowers. Also, some flowers have special meanings. So today, I will tell you two examples of two examples of special flowers and related events. First is pine. In Spokane, there is a lot of pine trees, right? And as you know, pine has a long needles. Japanese people think long needles connect to eternity and longevity. It means we can live as long as possible. That's why Pine is used as a decoration accessory for the new year. Now, pine is one of the symbols of the new year. The next example is peach flowers. Peach flowers are arranged for Doll Festival. Doll Festival is a girl's celebration on March 3rd. And peach flowers are full bloom in March. So Japanese people think peach flowers are wonderful flower to celebrate girls and welcome spring. That's why peach flowers are arranged for doll festival. So we can enjoy Japanese dolls and peach flowers for the, for, for the festival. In conclusion, Ikebana shows Japanese people's spirit, especially appreciation. Also, it is a connection with the nature. We can feel the beauty of the nature from Ikebana. Therefore, Ikebana is a beautiful and traditional art for Japanese people. Thank you for your listening. <laughs> now, Riho will talk about wonderful Japanese pottery. Thank you, Ayumi. Hello again, I'm Riho. As you know, my topic is Japanese pottery. By the way, when do you use pottery? <laughs> of course, we use pottery as dinnerware, flower base, and so on. However, Japanese people often enjoy the pottery as an art, and it's called toge. So today, I will introduce about the history, process, and types of toge. First, I focus on the history. The first Japanese pottery, called Jōmon Doki, was started 12,000 years ago. Jō means the rope, Mon means the design, and Doki means pottery. This pottery has rope design, so that's why it's called Jōmon Doki. After that, many foreign people came to Japan and told about their culture. So Japanese pottery was influenced by other countries, especially Korea and China. So Japanese, Japanese pottery look, began to look like these countries' pottery. Nowadays, Japanese pottery is still influenced by Korea and China. However, Japan Japanese artists of pottery arrange the size, shape, and paint, so it is easy for Japanese people to use. Next, I talked about the process. The first process is kneading the clay. There are two steps, and araneri is the way for making soft clay. Kikuneri is the way to take out the air. If the clay has the air, the pottery will be easy to break after firing. So it is a very important process. The middle process is making the shape. 
there are some techniques to make the shape, but the most popular technique is Rokuro Biki. Rokuro means potato oil, and Biki means to extend. The artist puts the clay on the oil and raise, lower, and push the clay to make the shape. The final processes are these three steps. The artist carve or paint de the design, and after that, they shave the surface for make it smooth. And finally, they fire the pottery. In this way, pottery is completed. Let's move on to types of toge. There are a lot of pottery all over the Japan, so today I will, eat, I will, I will discuss three of them. Shigaraki yaki, tobe yaki, and kiyomizu yaki. First is shigaraki yaki. It is made in Shiga prefecture, and it was started in 12th century. This pottery has dark brown color, and this is raccoon. <laughs> raccoon is the symbol of shigaraki yaki. Next is tobe yaki. It is made in Tobe town, Ehime prefecture. It was started in 18th century, and it has thick, glossy, white, and navy blue design. And this paint is called gosu. Final is kiyomizu yaki. Are you familiar with Kyoto? Thank you. Kyoto is one of ancient cities in Japan, and kiyomizu yaki is made in Kiyomizu area, Kyoto Prefecture. <coughs> Long years ago, Kyoto was the capital of Japan. So many people from different areas came to Kyoto and thought about their culture. So Kiyomizu yaki has feature of various culture. And it became popular in Edo era. And still, it is, it is a it is known as famous pottery in Japan. In conclusion, Japanese pottery is influenced by other countries, especially Korea and China. However, many Japanese artists of pottery try to arrange it for Japanese people. So there are a lot of pottery in Japan. Recently, most, pop most pottery is made by machine, but there are still people who make the pottery by hand to, pro to protect Japanese traditional way. So I'm proud of these people and their effort. Thank you for listening. <laughs> so next, Saya talk about fabulous Japanese drum. Thank you, Riho. Good evening. My name is Saya. Today, I would like to talk about Japanese drums, Wadaiko. Have you ever heard of Wadaiko? Yes. Thank you. Wadaiko is a kind of taiko, which means Japanese traditional drum. Also, the performance of playing Wadaiko is a very ancient and traditional art in Japan. Today, I will explain about history creating wadaiko and types of wadaiko. First, I will tell you about history of wadaiko. In Jomo era, wadaiko offered other cultural properties to Japan from Asian continent people. The oldest wadaiko had been found with haniwa from old burial mounds. Haniwa means clay figure or image. Next. Wadaiko represented the spiritual world. Japanese people are traditionally agricultural people, so they played Wadaiko to pray for fertility and drive every spirit out. During the medieval period, 
no developed, no is the oldest theatrical art in Japan. The feature is a lot of tragedies of historical myths. Badaiko was played as accompaniment. Moreover, in Edo era, kabuki became famous among common people. Kabuki is one of traditional stage arts along with no. The feature is to make people pleased and a strange appearance. About 10 kinds of badaiko were played as accompaniment music. Recently, the number of badaiko musicians has increased. Also, the video arcade game is now famous and popular in Japan. It is called Taiko no Tatsujin, which means drum master. It uses artificial drums and sticks. It was developed by a company which called Bandai Namco Games in 2001. It is similar to the, the American video arcade game which called Guitar Hero. These days, lovers of Wadaiko are more than 100,000 people all over the world. Let's move on to creating Wadaiko. The beginning, the beginning process of Wadaiko, the shell of Wadaiko is the most important part to sound. The wood is cut and dried. The work of shaping the shell is performed in winter because it is less likely to crack. Then it is sliced accordingly and hollowed. After that, it dries in the room for at least five years. Then it is finished by using a plane. Next, the middle process of Wadaiko. It involves leather of Wadaiko. It is used as Japanese cowhide. Experts judge to use parts carefully. After that, dust and damage are removed by using a plane. Cowhides are cut and sold by hands because it is difficult to get frayed. Then it dries in the sun for one week until complete to turn amber. Then it dries in the room for two years. Finally, the head is covered with leather. Experts step on leather to make good sounds to achieve the desired pitch and tone. Once it has been achieved, the leather is promptly tucked up. Then Wadaiko is complete. Finally, I will discuss types of Wadaiko. There are many kinds of Wadaiko and all play important roles. Especially musicians use three kinds of Wadaiko for summer festivals. First, Nagado Daiko which means long shell drum. It is made of evergreen oak. It produces low sound. And also, it is the most popular and impressive type of wadaiko. Next, hiradaiko, which means flat drum. It is made of zelkova wood. Zelkova is a kind of deciduous tree which found in Asia. It produces the highest and lightest sound. Finally, okedo daiko, which means bucket drum. It is made of Japanese shiraz, and it produces medium sound which compared to others. From now, I will show you the video which uses these three kinds of wadaiko. These kinds of wadaiko have different effects for summer festivals. In conclusion, wadaiko appeared a long time ago. However, it is still used by a lot of people today. They show many things such as our feeling, spirit, and culture. So we have to preserve wadaiko for our future. Thank you for listening.
So now you learned about Japanese floral arrangement from Ayumi, about Japanese pottery from me, and about Japanese drum from Saya. So Japanese art expresses Japanese people's heart and mind. It has originality of Japanese people and ancient culture. So if you have a chance to come to Japan, please try Japanese art. Thank you for listening. Does anyone have any question? Yes. Yes. Is there a difference between the uh, Odaiko drums and the Taiko drums, or are they the same? Oh, the question is, uh, is the Odaiko drums and Wadaiko have differences? Um, I think it is, yes. Um, Taiko is a um, big group name of drums. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, yes please. Do students learn to play Wadaiko drums in school? The question is, the children learn Wadaiko at school. Um, I've never learned at school. <laughs> However, but I saw the pictures at, from textbooks. Yes, please. What about flower arrangement? Is that part of school? Um, uh, the question is, uh, is Ikebana, does, does Ikebana uh, teach at the school? Um, as I mentioned, uh, some girls' schools are still teaching Ikebana at the class. And in my case, I, I went to girls' schools and I learned Ikebana at the class one year. And what about pottery? The question is, the, the, does it? Did I or some student learn about pottery in school? Actually, I never learned about pottery at school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. The question is, what kind of manner uh, do women learn at the class through Ikebana lesson? And I think Japanese people think um, if the women can do Ikebana, uh, people think the person has a uh, man, uh, fright, the person is frightened and have a good manner. So uh, the image of uh, Women is um, Ikebana. <laughs> Any more questions? Thank you for listening.